As promised in the last video, here is a video talking about the new banner system in detail and also the live stream codes. I'll start with the live stream codes since you all will forget to redeem them otherwise. Here they are. I'll make sure to put them in the community post and in the comments. I'll also talk about if Archons will be in this banner, the rate at which these characters will rerun, and such. All right then, let's move on to the new banner. So the new banner system is called the Chronicled Wish. In this banner, we can expect three limited characters and three standard banner characters. This time, the limited characters are Eula, Albedo, and Klee. We also have weapons in this banner, but not just standard. The limited weapons of the limited characters in this banner will be available as well. Also, there is more. Players that missed out on Tignari and Dahia, weapon banners will be able to get them as well. All right, now let's see how this works and the good and bad of this banner. Trust me, there is a very bad things about it. It works similar to other banners. Wish 90 pulls to get a five star and in every 10 pulls you do, you are guaranteed a four star. They didn't say anything about the four stars, so I'm guessing it's the standard banner four star pool in here, no special regional four stars or anything like that. The specialty of this banner is that we are allowed to chart a course for a particular character or weapon. So let's say you are wishing for Eula. You will select Eula like you do in the weapon banner and set the course. When you do this, you will only get five star characters and not the five star weapons. So basically, when you choose a 5-star character, you can only get a 5-star character. Weapons will be excluded. So when you hit Pity and Win, well, congrats. You just got yourself Eula. But if you lose, you will get one of the other 5-star characters, including the limited characters. So if you lose on Aula, you could get Klee, Albedo, Diluc, Mona, or Jean. After you lose your 50-50 in this, since you already charted for Eula, you will gain one fate point. Now the fate point is the same with the weapon banner. You lose twice in the weapon banner, and the next weapon is guaranteed to be the one you charted. But in this banner, you don't need two fate points. All you need is one. So if you lose the 50-50 once in this banner, you are guaranteed to get the character you charted for, which in this case is Eula. So if you want me to summarize that, you select Eula on the epithomized path stuff, if you lose, you get a five-star character from the five characters in the pool, including limited characters like Albedo and Klee. Since you selected a character, you will not get a weapon if you lose your 50-50. After losing, you get a fate point, which means your next character is guaranteed to be Eula. Same goes for the weapons in this banner as well. You select a weapon you want, then wish and hit pity. If you lose, you won't get a character, Instead, you will get a five-star weapon in that pool. I hope you get it. But the big problem with this is that if you lose your 50-50 and gain a fate point, you aren't able to obtain the character you charted for in the next banner. Which means when 4.5 is over and 4.6 starts the fate point, will reset. Meaning it's the same with the weapon banner. If you don't get the character or weapon, the next version it resets and you have to do it all over again. But this wish seems to last the whole version, so there will be no first half or second half on this banner. It will be permanent throughout a single version. So if you save enough, you can get the character or weapon from this banner easily. If you want to know if Archons will be in this banner, yes, they will be, and I will explain it. The criteria to be in this banner is that the limited character should have a past of three reruns, so the character that has received at least three reruns and has not rerun anytime soon. So rerun characters from 4.4 and 4.3 won't be in this banner anytime soon, is what they are saying. In detail, if you want to know, new characters like Navia, Cloud Retainer, Liney, etc. won't be in this banner until they rerun three times. So, for example, let's say Nouvellet reran in 5.1 or something. If he does, it will be his third rerun, so he is qualified to be in this banner. But we won't see him in 5.2 or 5.3, but in 5.4, if there is an event that has Nouvellet in it, much like we had him in 4.4, or there the main event is in Fontaine, they will add him to the Chronicled Wish. Now, if you are asking me if it is good to wish on this banner or not, I would say it is a scam banner, but it is also not. 
If you are someone who has enough wishes to guarantee the character or weapon, go ahead and go crazy. But if you are someone hoping to get lucky, I wouldn't really recommend this banner to you. Since guaranteed pity doesn't move on to other versions, if you lose, that's it. All the wishes are gone. But if you play smart and save, you can get what you are looking for. Data miners are going to have fun with this, and from 4.5 onwards, we will be making not just normal banner videos, but also the new Chronicle banner. I really wish they allowed us to maintain the guaranteed pity system. It would have been a wonderful banner, but yeah. They had to add the Genshin touch to it. Well, this will most likely be the last banner update we get since now we have seven limited characters rerun per patch. Two each in the first and second half, and then three in the new banner which would be more than enough for the entirety of this game, so no four banner speculation or anything like that. Let me know what you all think about this. Do you like what they added, or do you think they could have done a better job with it? Personally, if they made it so our guarantee will pass on versions, this is the best banner ever. But yeah, we didn't get that. Also, if you are wondering about Arlecchino and 4.6 in general, we do have a lot of pre-beta information, but more solid info and visual data will come in two weeks, which means on March 11th we should be seeing her drip marketing, and I think there is a four-star coming as well. I'm not sure who it is. On March 12th we should see her full kit details, in-game splash art, and other things related to the game. And lastly, on March 13th we should be able to see her visuals, so that will be her animations, the new map, and more exciting things like that. Anyway, that's it from me. So again, what are your thoughts on 4.5 and about this banner? As I said in the last video, sadly, we did not get a Danesleaf quest, which means 4.6 will mostly likely see his return. I'm super excited for that, not gonna lie, as the main reason I play this game is for the lore and the cool-looking characters. Dane is supposed to tell us more about the sinner's identity, and it's going to be on the new map, which, if you didn't already know, will be the middle area you see here that looks like the Pokemon Ditto. They say parts of this map have something to do with Kanria Battlefield and things like that, which is why I said earlier that Dane has a really good chance to be here. If you remember the chasm in 1.6, he had his quest with the release of the map, and the underground had a lot to do with Kanria and mostly the Abyss so it makes sense why he didn't come in 4.5 and why he will be in 4.6. So what do you think? Comment down your thoughts, and while you are at it, like and sub too. Oh, and turn on the notifications as well so you don't miss out on anything. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day, everyone.